And it's at the uh, Liberty Forum registration table where we have the stamp. So I'll just go ahead and turn it over to these guys and uh, begin again. Cool. He's there. He's right on time. I've got minutes. <laughs> Is it not? <laughs> Morning. All right. Go see. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Activist Centers in New Hampshire panel. <clears throat> okay. First, I guess I should introduce our panelists. Um, start with me. I'm Mike Vine, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Praxium, which is an activist center liberty space in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, we have Ian Freeman, uh, who's the founder and operator of the Keene Activist Center in Keene. Um, we got Kirk McNeil, who is the former and soon-to-be <laughs> operator of Area 23, which uh, operated very successfully in Manchester and now is reopening as a brew pub in Concord. And we have Hofer Nave, who is the one of the co-founders of The Quill in Manchester and The Domes, its associated country property, country estate. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give some brief remarks just to set the tone of you know, why we care about activist centers, and then we'll go to questions for the panelists. <clears throat> okay, so I'll, I think a lot of people have asked themselves before they experience the Free State Project, uh, in the age of the internet, why do we need to concentrate ourselves in one geographic location? And I, activist centers are a big part of that answer. Um, when we're spread out on the internet, uh, we can do a certain amount of socializing and getting to know each other, but it's only through true geographic concentration that we're really able to form these clubs and get into a whole other level of activities, which we'll get into uh, with the questions. I think this is part of uh, what, what I'm calling the Liberty Movement 2.0. We went from being sort of a loose group of allies, maybe we'd get together once a week, uh, to within New Hampshire really becoming a strong community and uh, being able to form businesses together, um, start meetups with special interests, and get a little bit beyond uh, just, okay, well, what do you think about uh, net neutrality? Okay, well, I think the same thing. Okay, let's have a drink. Um, we've really been able to, to move past that, and I think we'll get into exactly how on this panel. Um, these, these centers enable things from homeschooling to barter to skill sharing, co-working, all sorts of interesting things. And uh, it's just really it's things that you can't accomplish, especially with the NSA eavesdropping and all your electronic uh, communications. This is really how belief systems survive without the state. If you look at other uh, traditions, I, I look to religious traditions, I'm not religious myself, but if you look at the types of people who are able to sustain beliefs outside of the state, they do come together. They build community, they build common institutions, and I think this is the beginning of that. So I hope that in this panel you can learn a little bit about what we do um, and maybe apply it at home or uh, move to New Hampshire if you're not here already and, and join us and, and uh, help build what we're building. Okay, so uh, just as far as, as format, um, feel free to raise your hands to ask follow-ups after any particular response, but we will have a Q&A at the end um, for the panelists. I've got uh, quite a few questions here, so we'll try to keep answers to a, few, a couple of minutes each, uh, if you don't mind, uh, unless there's something you really want to pontificate on. And we'll get started with a, a brief overview of your space. Uh, so yeah, the Keene Activist Center was started uh, back in 2010, just slightly after the Quill. Uh, the idea at the time was that uh, Liberty Activists in Keene were frequently meeting up at someone's house, uh, usually on like a Saturday night after karaoke, and there was a large group of people, and it just it was such a large group that really just didn't work for someone's personal space. You know, they wanted to go to sleep at some point, and were likely too nice to just kick everyone out when they really wanted to go to sleep. 
And so I think that was one of the kind of the uh, the, the instigators behind the Keen Activist Center. Uh, the the thing that it's used for primarily is uh, social and activist gatherings. Uh, so you know whether it's having a uh, somebody's having a birthday party, or it's getting together for karaoke, or it's making signs for some sort of protest, uh, you know, or having a strategy session, or in some cases after something happens that we didn't plan for, like the an activist getting arrested, the first place people go after something like that happens is to the Keen Activist Center to you know, sort of regroup. And so it's become a, a real resource for the people in Keene. And uh, I think it's great that they're starting to sprout up all across the state. I don't know if I've really answered the question, but uh, yeah, that's good. there you go. Hey, my name is Kurt McNeil, and I am one of the co-founders of the Once and Future Area 23. Kevin Bloom, my other co-founder, is sitting over there where he can get into only a small amount of trouble. Um, Area 23 has a lot of reasons why it's called Area 23, but one of them is because we didn't want the name to define so much what was going on there. It's just a space where we do things. Um, it's a space where we do things now, like uh, have, host people and, and have parties and drink beer. It was a space like that before. It's a space where we could have Church of the Sword and a space where we could do the informal university, a space where people could get together. Kevin and I started doing uh, business together, we started Church of the Sword and the Informal University and we worked with shared spaces for a long period of time. Um, and then we had an opportunity to set up Area 23. And uh, you know, one, one thing that I think we always try to keep in mind was, as cool as the space is, it's just a space. It's a space where people get together and do important things and hang out with people who become important in their lives. It's a place to build community. And that's one thing that we've tried to remember. Even when we moved into the old space, we always had an idea in our head that eventually we were going to have to find a new space because no space is ever big enough for our space. Could, could, you, could you real quick elaborate and maybe pass it back to Ian just on approximate size and amenities, if any, for the people who aren't as familiar with each of the... Keen Activist Center is essentially a house. Uh, I owned a duplex, I lived on one side, that's where the LRN.FM studios are. The other side, when I purchased the duplex, had tenants in it, and after a few years of uh, living there, they moved on, and it was at that time that it was an uh, ideal time to turn that into the Keen Activist Center. So it's essentially a 1,600 square foot house, a two-story uh, house. So it's not as large as the Quill, and I imagine not as large as Area 23, but Keen also doesn't have as many uh, activists to serve. So hopefully at some point we'll have a second one or, uh, or a larger one to replace it. So before there was the old Area 23, we used shared spaces. We met sometimes at the Quill, uh, which Ofer obviously can tell you about, and uh, we also used, gosh, Gary Johnson's campaign office from time to time, and uh, some medical offices where uh, uh, people who were involved with us worked after hours. Pardon? And the park. We used the park a lot, too. Um, the old Area 23 was approximately 4,500 square feet of warehouse space. And the new Area 23 is about 3,200 square feet of also warehouse space. Um, but the new Area 23 is going to be what in New Hampshire is called a nanobrewery and a small restaurant. So um, it's going to have those features as well as uh, having some space for classrooms and socializing and, and things of that nature. And darts. And darts. And pool. And pie. Always pie. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, core stats. Uh, the Quill is um, in a three-story building uh, in the northwest quadrant of Manchester. Uh, the second and third floors are our apartments, which are currently all occupied by porcupines. Uh, it took some time to make that happen, but it's awesome now. Uh, the first floor is a storefront. It's about 2,000 square feet. We've got that, and we've got the basement, which is probably about another 1,000 to 1,500 square feet. Um, we opened in late 2010, and we're still here. Uh, regarding uh, purposes and uses, pretty much everything they said. Questions? Uh, um, uh, oh, yeah. Um, I too have a space. Uh, so the Praxium is uh, a new entrance into this uh, category. We're uh, 2,500 square feet in, uh, Port in downtown Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, we're in a former warehouse space. Uh, 
um, that was semi-industrial until we took it over. It was pro originally built as a plumbing warehouse and then um, most recently as a woodworking shop. And we cleaned it up and, and turned it into a co-working space and classroom space and meeting space. Um, that for us, that's been a particular, I guess, angle of, of attack um, is going into the co-working category. There's in a lot of big cities now with the increasing number of creatives, people working from home. Uh, there are these spaces forming that are purely commercial that uh, pr provide a place for you to come in, drop your, you know, bring your laptop, get some work done, hang out with, with like-minded people, share ideas, and go home. So we, we use that as kind of the basis, but we also have a big classroom, a lounge area, um, and a lot of facilities just for the community in general. Um, okay, so how would you say that uh, your space fits in with the vibe of your local community? Well, I mean, it's, it's a space. I think that's kind of the common theme here, and the local community is what it is. I mean, they're, they're made up of whoever they are, and they bring their vibe to that space. So, you know, each individual brings a certain set of talents. Uh, we got Garrett Ian, who's sitting up in the front row. He, had, uh, for a time, was one of the managers. There's been a long uh, history of different activists sort of coming through and uh, cutting their teeth, essentially, as manager of the KAC. It is a thankless job. Uh, it does not pay, and uh, you know, that's probably why we move through so many of them, but at the same time, uh, they do a really great, uh, I think, level of service for the community. And one of the things Garrett was known for was, uh, was bringing his cooking talents uh, to the forefront and offering uh, you know, tacos every single night on demand. Uh, and there, there were other people who did the same thing where uh, we, for, at one time, and the things sort of cycle in the activist world, people kind of cycle into some things and then they'll cycle out and they'll do something else. So at one time we actually had five nights a week where someone different would come in and, and cook a meal. And activists, you know, many of them are poor and single, and they, you know, would love to come by and have someone cook a meal for them. So, you know, just I think the space just takes on the vibe of whoever takes an interest in it, whoever sees a value in creating something there, whether it be a regular meeting that they want to uh, they wanna hold, or you know, a karaoke party, or whatever. I should really let Ofer go next. Really? Yeah. You should. Okay. So that was some minutes. Um, all right. Um, the question was specifically, how does, how does your space fit in with the vibe of your local community? Okay. Um, well, uh, so the Quill is in Manchester, um, and we picked Manchester because we wanted to be one of the biggest places so that we could have the most number of people and the most activity. So I think that's probably uh, what we're what separates us the most is just simply scale. Um, we've got hundreds and hundreds of activists living within either walking or a short drive distance. Um, so you see a really wide variety of people, you see a large number of people, and you see a large number of events of all types. Right? You can't really pigeonhole it. Um, classes are best done at Area 23, I think, in Praxi, probably. Um, so everyone's got their niche. I think we're, we're pretty good on the social niche and on the activism meeting niche. Um, we're open 24 seven, um, so that fits in with a sort of the urban large scale sort of feel, um, as opposed to um, a smaller town, a club might have more limited hours. I don't know, what's the plan with, with the new area 23 inches of hours? Oh, we're gonna be open, uh, basically, well, here, but <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good opportunity for me to jump in there. When, when Area 23 was located in Manchester, we were very event-based. If we were having an event, we were there, and if we weren't having an event, then we weren't there. And it was very interesting because with the presence of the Quill just on the other side of town, every now and again, you'd have people send us a Facebook message and go, I'm over here now. Why don't anyone come to the door? And the answer was, because we're not doing anything there right now. <laughs> um, in the new space, we're going to have what most people would probably think of as regular restaurant hours. We're going to be open for lunch. We're going to be open for dinner. Uh, Mondays, we're holding aside for private events. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll be open for a short day on Sunday, but uh, we'll be open during what most people would think of as restaurant and pub hours, um, except for special events. So, um, and as far as community goes, one of the things, um, another thing, locating in Manchester while the Quill was already in Manchester invited invariably, you know, it, it invited comparisons between us and the Quill. You know, and it was really interesting because. Some people would say, oh, you guys are competing with the Quill. And 
my thought was, no, we don't want to be like the quill. We want the quill to be the quill. We like the quill. We want to be another space where it's easier to do classes and where we can do events that get scheduled. Not and it was notable how little overlap there was in terms of the demographic and the types of events. Some people would go to both, but it was a very different vibe. It was a different vibe, and that's one of the reasons that uh, when we looked to relocate, um, well, we needed to relocate, but when we were picking our new place, one of the things that we did was say, okay, what's going to be different and how can we address the needs of the community and the needs of ourselves to find the right market for our things? And that's one of the reasons that we're going to be in Concord, because there are a lot of us that spend a lot of time and energy trying to send our friends to Concord for three or four days out of the week, several weeks out of the year, and there really wasn't a good place in Concord for those people to meet and hang out afterwards. There wasn't a good place in Concord. Really, Concord didn't have a lot of a, uh, an evening scene at all. We also found that a lot of the folks who were coming to see us in Manchester were driving down from the Lakes region or uh, you know, coming in from outside of Manchester. So we looked for a place that was kind of at a crossroads and the location that we're at is roughly 80 minutes from Keene, about 45 minutes from the seacoast, about 35 minutes from uh, like the Derry, London Derry area, which is south of Manchester. It's only about 15 minutes from Manchester, and it's only about 20 minutes away from Tilton, which I think of as sort of the southern tip of the lakes region. So we were trying to find a location where, really, as long as you're not on foot, we're pretty accessible. All right, uh, as far as the practicing is concerned, um, our vibe on the seacoast is uh, somewhat, I guess, business oriented, uh, definitely family oriented. We've seen uh, a huge uh, proliferation of family events. People love being able to bring their kids. We've got the big warehouse space so the kids sort of run back and forth in big groups, which is, which is fun. Um, and, and we do have the, uh, the co-working aspect.